So good afternoon, everyone. Today is Sunday, the 2nd of April, 2023. Welcome to our one Taiji lecture a week from the European Taiji Culture Center. The European Taiji Culture Center is global network platform and provides a gateway for many of deeper application of traditional Chinese culture, philosophy, medicine, and sinology. My name is Qiang Yu, based in south of Germany. Today, we have continued to learn our young style 37 from Tai Ji Quan from our master Zhao Youbin and his son Zhao Liang. Mr. Zhao Youbin is one of the top 10 Tai Ji family published by the World Taiji Quan Network. Master Zhao Youbin has spent his Kung Fu throughout China and more than 20 countries with duplication and studies all over the world. Master Zhao Liang is the Vice President of Yang Taiji Association in Yongnian, Xi'an, and also the Advision Advisor of American Taiji application and the chef in Chadakturum. Today we have the nice class. This is the demonstration, the form 23, Fair Lady Works at Satis. Form 24, Step Forward and Patch with Palm. Form 25, Crossing Legs. Okay. Uh, I wish you have a nice time to learn <laughs> our 23 to 25. Hello, my friends. My name is Zhao Yubin. We are going to learn lesson 9 today. In the previous lessons, we talked about hand and step techniques. And today, the main topic will be body techniques, which includes static and dynamic postures and how to master their essentials. The spine is the backbone of the body up to the cervical spine, down to the tailbone. The parts of the body with exception of the head and limbs, is called the trunk. The so-called body techniques are the main essentials of exercise related with the trunk. The essentials of young family Tai Chi Chuan are summarized in two words, Zhong Zheng, Central Alignment, the concept of Shen Fa Zhong Zheng, the body should be upright and central, means Bu Pian Bu Yi, impartiality. During exercise, no matter if it is static or dynamic, no matter how the postures change, we should always keep the balance of the body, which means the central stability of the force and the posture. The weight should not be exceeded or tilted, not too far forward, nor too far backward. In the dynamic case, just like buildings of different shapes, they should keep their centralized equilibrium, but how could we keep our body centrally aligned? According to Tai Chi theory, the force is rooted in the feet, powered by the legs, controlled by the waist, and expressed through the fingers. Briefly, all movements of the limbs, including advancing and retreating, rely on the control of the waist. 
The moving point is not in the head, nor in the hands, nor in the legs and feet, but in the middle part of the body, that is, the waist. Firstly, we should know where the waist is. The parts from the shoulders down to the hips form the backbone of the body. Then, which part do we use when we practice Tai Chi Chuan? The upper body or the lower body? Of course, mainly the waist. By waist, we mean the area between the lower part of the ribs and the hips. The waist and the abdomen are interrelated. They are an integral whole. The waist is the center of the body. Dantian acupoint, both sides of the small of the back and the gate of life is also in this area. When we say Zhu Zai Yu Yao, controlled by the waist, we mainly refer to this area, but it is the psoas muscles that controls the up and down motion, that is, the parts between the life gate and the tailbone. And how do we operate and master it? This is what we will clarify today. Let's take grasping the bird's tail as example. This form is suitable for practicing fixed step push hands. The first point that we should master is how to use the waist to realize advancing and retreating, front bow stance and sitting back. Please look. If I practice like this way, ward off, roll back, press and push, do you feel it comfortable? Why would you be uncomfortable? Because instead of the waist, it is the upper body that controls the movement. For example, when warding off, if you move the head and the shoulders forward, and then when moving back, you lean the body back or shift the left or right, shaking the shoulders, etc. All this is the movement of the upper body because of the wrong moving point. We say simply that for young family Tai Chi Chuan, the moving point is at the lumbar spine, or rather to say at the tailbone. The key concept is that the tailbone is always the main moving point for advancing and retreating. The psoas muscles drive the movement in all directions. Knowing the position of what drive the movement is the first point that we should understand. I have told you before that during the complete process of movement, from the preparation to the end, the waist and the hips drive and coordinate the movement of the limbs. Or we may say that the waist serves the hands. This is very important. Leaning the body forward or backward or shaking the shoulders are very common mistakes. And how to do it correctly? Please look at the fixed step warding off. When we are warding off forward, we should feel the force in the hands. Where does this force feeding originate? It is the tailbone that moves forward. As it contacts the ground and combines with the strength of the feet, forming a forward movement, just like we use the tailbone 
to blow the fuse. We use the waste to control and transmit、uh, forward power. Now, how does the body co coordinate with the movement? The body moves forward following this force and posture. Look, push back the leg and move the forward, the tailbone, like blowing the fuse. If you keep moving like this, the body would be rigid. It should be that the tail actively moves forward, and the body follows this movement, stretching all the points one by one, and meanwhile holding the arms round and open. It is not acceptable that you move only the head or shoulders forward instead of moving them. Together with the body, we should feel that the complete back is full of power. In Tai Chi theory, we say, "Qi tie yu bei, li you ji fa." The back is full of qi, vital energy, and the force is released from the spine. If you move this way, there should be empty and floating force, which is not released from the back. We should stretch the body forward, following the movement of the tailbone, blowing the fuse that would form a whole force through the top and down. A common mistake that we make is that the moving point is in the upper body instead of the tailbone. When moving back, sitting back, we should also push back the lower part of the back. That is, the tailbone leads the backward movement. Never do like this way, or only move the legs. Here we emphasize the active function of the waist. There seems to be a rope, and we pull it back. This force comes out of the waist. This is the retreating process. During this process, the movement is not along a straight line, but there is shifting left. And shifting right, shifting left and shifting right means the flexibility of the body. For example, when we push forward, the tailbone pulls back in a straight line. At the same time, the waist and hips should avoid the central position in order to keep the centrally balanced posture. So the hips should shift left and shift right, even though such change. Of the movement is very tiny, but it shows a kind of reiki. Of course, perhaps in some of the other postures, such shifting scope may be a little larger. Please do not try always to keep your body straight. Your movement would be limited then. And what is the process? Well, I move back the weight. I bend the back leg and turn the left loin slightly to the left. Keep moving the weight backward and push back the front leg. The force now turns to the right. This is so-called shifting left and shifting right. Finally, we should never squeeze ourselves. Or lean the body back. We should draw the buttocks in. Look, the part between the left gate and the tailbone turns to the left, and then to the right. Just a tiny movement. Then draw in the buttocks, which forms an intercepting force that pushes down. The drawing in of the tailbone, together with the thoracic vertebra, 
form a circular force, but do be careful not to have an arced back. This force does not go up, but always sinks between the waist and the legs. It makes the hips sink down, then move them back, then to the left, to the right, just a little, and then draw in the tailbone, causing you at the same time to contract the abdomen and anus muscles. Some friends may ask if this is withdraw the abdomen and anus muscles. Yes, right. But it is the withdrawing of the buttocks or tailbone that causes the contraction of the abdomen and elevation of the crotch. This is a linked movement. The power is concentrated in the abdomen and the muscle groups cooperate with the movement of the bones. The bones are the main body of the movement. So we should make it clear that the muscle groups and other parts of the body adjust degrees of relaxation and tightness as the bones move. This is shifting left and shifting right in fixed step. Left, right, impartiality. There should be no slanting, no swinging. All the above is about the process of moving back the weight in fixed step. During this process, it is the hips that fold and rotate left and right flatly instead of the shoulders. Look, the shoulders move and turn. That's wrong. The hips should follow the waist to turn left and right and draw in. Let's take right warning of example. After having dropped down the right foot, it is not allowed that the force directly leads the body or the shoulders forward. We should rotate and fold the hips, which drives the whole body to extend out accordingly. The other two evident examples are in the forms brushing knee in twist step and raising hands. It is impossible that you move the weight back without rotating the waist. Moving the weight back depends on the hips, and rotating the body depends on the waist. The movement of the hips and the waist releases malleability and makes way for the shoulders and hands. And with the weight moving back and the waist rotating, the latter extend or stretch out accordingly. If you do like this way, there is no ductility, no movement of the waist nor of the hips. That is twisting the body. So when we are rolling back, the hips should simultaneously move back and rotate, then rotate again. Meanwhile, the waist muscles, the back and the thoracic vertebra follow the movement of the hips, which makes the whole figure extend out accordingly. If you act like this way, it is rocking. The moving point is not clear, off on the shoulders. Zhong Zheng, central alignment in the body technique means we take the vertical spine, backbone, and the horizontal waist and hips as axle respectively to form a cross, and we make curved and circular movements around this body trunk. This is horizontal, and this is vertical. Our center is at the abdomen. The body moves back with the waist and the hips instead of going straight, following the moving back of the weight. It moves and rotates at the same time. The center guides the limbs 
and other parts of the body to make the movement flexible, a movement of zhi zhong yu qi, straightness implying curve. Let me emphasize that all the movement in fixed step are controlled by the waist. The tailbone, the waist muscles, and the hips form a linked moving relation in controlling the upper body and the lower body. We have talked about the movement in fixed step in the form grasping the bird's tail, and we know that the waist is the controller of all movements, of course, including stepping forward. For example, in the form brushing knee in twist step, when we need to step forward to move the weight backward, changing the solidness and emptiness, where is the moving point? This way? No, it is the hips that move backward. Will the whole weight move onto the right leg when we move the hips backward? Sure, but next, when we lift the left leg, we need the right loin to pull the leg backward. Let me show you again. It is not so simple as just moving back the weight and lifting the leg. The movement is too stiff without any harmony and there is no balance in this dynamic state. A lack of linked moving. Look, we move the hips back and pull the waist back. There are two moving points, but the waist is the controller. We lift the leg not simply with the force of the leg, but with the force and coordination of the waist. Then rotate the waist to the right. So this is a very important moving process of being controlled by the waist. Especially in the form step back and repulse the monkey, when stepping back, we should not only move the body leverly like this way. There would be nothing to do with the waist. We should pull back the right waist as the weight moves back. And what happens to the waist? We should draw in the buttocks and then the figure slightly moves back and outside. You should not straighten the body like this. Then the figure is not coordinated and the waist is hard. And the balance point is not natural at the supporting point of the right leg. On the contrary, this balance point would be shared by the other parts of the body. If so, the right hip is hard and this force is superfluous. We name it Shuang Zhong, double weight. Here, the emphasis is that the weight moves back is not merely a movement of the hip, but the right waist plays a major role, which pulls back the whole waist and lifts the left leg. Then, when stepping forward, the right loin should pull and control the left leg with an inner toughness instead of relaxation in order to control the balance. After having lowered the left foot, all moving parts are relaxed, including waist and hips, thighs and hip joints, and then naturally producing a sense of advancing. But now, watch out. If you do this way, the movement would be stiff and hard. It is only a movement of the leg. And now, how should the waist control and coordinate the movement? First, the waist and then the tailbone are relaxed and sunken down and the foot is solid. So the whole back and the waist are stretched out. 
we should not curl the body. Instead, with the relaxation of the back and hips, we should feel very comfortable, and we naturally extend the figure and lightly move it forward. What is the wrong action? For example, after stepping up, the head stretches forward, which is wrong. The waist rises up or even collapses down, which is wrong. As the foot falls to the ground and the weight moves forward, the hips rotate and go forward in cooperation with the leg. The tailbone sinks down to plow the fields, the back and the waist accordingly with the force of the direction push forward, forming a diagonal line between the legs and the whole body with the same force. Let me repeat the incorrect action and demonstrate it again. Stretch out the foot and hits the ground. The waist rises up or collapses down, or the body moves forward and the head stretches out, or the shoulders move forward, or walk sideways and then turn the body. All the above is wrong. We should at the moment the foot lowers down on the ground, keep the head upright, relax the shoulders and the hips, and sink the force down to the feet. Open the crotch, plow the fields, extend the waist muscles, and push the whole body forward, step by step, finally to form a bow stance. Everything is controlled by the waist. If you take a step forward like this, it is not controlled by the waist, and the leg is light and floating. So the main topic today is about how to use the waist and how to understand controlled by the waist in fixed step and forward step. The most important is the moving point is not in the head nor in the throat. How to understand the phrase 守住猴头永不抛? Do not ever re reveal the throat. Look, it is wrong that you stick out the throat or stretch the head or the shoulders forward when stepping forward. I throw a punch because of the push of force produced by the waist twisting. The moving point is not in the legs, nor in the shoulders, nor in the head, remember, controlled by the waist. The area of the waist includes two hips, the subcostal muscles, chest, and the spine. Once we grasp this key point to practice Tai Chi Chuan, it means we have mastered the main method. In the next lesson, we will continue more content on the body techniques to further clarify controlled by the waist. Thank you very much.重心前移
向右肘下穿去，腋下要空，然后两手徐徐分开，随左腿，左手前伸，然后弓步，左手捧，右手推，注意松肩，右手高于胸鳍。再看第二个玉米穿梭。第一动，重心不变，扣左脚尖，左手于外旋松落，右手负肘，然后其右腿两手成为十字手，其右转，右手随，左手带，然后弓步，右手捧，左手推，左脚跟要向后蹬，使脚尖内扣。四十五度，反向做一遍。一扣脚尖，左手背松落，右手负肘。二七右腿，两手成为十字手。三松腰胯，右转迈步，两手同时分开，然后徐徐弓步，横推弓相连。重心前移，右手前伸，左手回带，两手心相对。接着弓步，右掌心翻朝上，左手穿出，随弓步，右手在左臂下翻掌，使掌心朝下。再来一遍，注意动作要平稳，手前后拉开，随弓步，左手穿掌，注意要沉手腕。右掌心翻朝下，眼向前平视，注意腋下要松空。重心后移，体右转，扣左脚尖，两手基本保持圆形，左手拦回，然后左掌心翻朝下，重心左移，三，转腰起腿，抬脚，然后屈膝下沉。再来一遍，三百连。注意，动作平稳的右转，左掌心朝上，眼随左手，然后再回转，起腿时要松腰，拧腿，沉落，两掌心朝下。Hello, everyone.
In this section, we are going on explain the twenty third style of Yang Si Tai Ji Quan for Lady Shadows. The last move, parting while horse mane, which is continuous movement like the brush knee and transverse low Si Ao Bu for Lady Shadows in the action. Of turning in four directions at an oblique angle, in thirty-seven style, is composed of two movements, one left and one right. In traditional eight-five style, is composed of two groups of four fur lady shadows. It's necessary to practice at four epic angles in turn, and the action is slightly simplified in thirty-seven style. The next action is parting while horse's mane, and next the fur lady shadows. With the left angle of forty-five degree, then turn your body behind you and do a right shadow, which is done at two oblique angles. Now viewing from the front, this action is also a lunge. Twist hand and put your front hand over your heart. Is down by turning diagonally. An important pose of this motion in the eighty-five style is to practice the ability of body rotation, waist and hip opening and closing. By this big turning, we can train the ability of opening and closing the waist and the hip. This is one of the purpose. Let's see it again. How to do this action after parting while horse mane? The first move is to swing the right foot out slightly, turn the body right, then turn the right hand diagonally to the right, left turn to the left diagonal, bend the elbow back, left hand is under the right armpit. Step forward, push left hand forward to the chest. Sink right hand to the right crouch, and then push right hand forward with the lunge, and rotate the left arm upward. This is first way for for lady shadows at first alert. In fact, there are two parts. In left shadow, the first part is to swing the foot slightly outward. The swing should not over forty four. As long as it is slightly outward, just turn your body to the right, tilt your left hand to the right as you swing your foot and push your palm out as if. The left hand will push the right hand out. Turn the body slightly to the right. Lift the left leg and continue to rotate the thumb outward. As the right hand pushes, we call it Ni In Tai Ji techniques. Then turn your body diagonally to the left. Keep on lifting knee, rolling waist. Tucking your crouch and sit still, bend your right elbow back and put your left hand to the right under your right armpit, forming an embrace in front of your chest while turning waist. Bend your right hand inward with elbow on the side of your little finger. This is also a new word return motion. This action has two methods: onward and inward. Before performing the fine lady shadows, find out changes in the hand shape of the two movements. 
it's not right to take it back directly to be the fair lady shadow. There were two knee movements during the transformation. I hope you will pay more attention to this detail. This is for us to learn the complete eighty-five style routine in the future. Changing from a single whip to a fur lady shadow, and preparing for those two strong forces in this place. We deal with these two forces in thirty-seven in this way. We have to clear the technical milling. Starting from here is the fur lady shadow section. Which uses the front hand frame in the technical application. Use the right hand to hit forward and the ball stance. To fight, use spiral force while meeting. Therefore, when the forearm goes up, don't block with the hand directly, but to reach out for distant meeting. Bring the other person closer. I will turn him back. Follow the trend and hit forward with the right hand. The left hand is upper hand when holding it. It goes out and forward with a big nine, and then arcs inward, a large arc like a parabola. When the forearm meets, it turns it and lifts it up. The honor and the readings rotate and lift it up. So the hand must follow a large arc. The arm keep on rolling and rotating during the lifting. Arm be down in rotation. Look, first move, pull back and forth. Sink your right hand down to your right crotch. Left hand outward with palm seat. Know that when pushing forward, rotate the left arm upward. Meanwhile, upward, backward rotating. When pushes the right hand forward, it's also necessary to sink the shoulder and drop the elbow. Sit to rest. Rotate the hand and push it forward until the tiger mouth faces the shoulder socket. Place left hand above the forehead, with the little finger slightly higher than the forehead. From the side view, the common problem is that left hand does not retract while lifting, but upward directly. And both hands are in front of body in final pose. Up and down are almost on the same plane. The left hand is nest inward, so it's necessary to rotate the arm up. Suddenly, when the right hand is pushed forward, it's easy to push outward from the camera. The right hand has been pushed to the outside of body. Push your right hand in front of your right chest with the tight mouth faces the shoulder socket. It's actually the same position as low shi elbow and pushing your palm out. We should pay attention to these two tips about hand movements. Let's do it again from the two sides of parting the wild horse's mane for more impressions. Viewing from back,
This is the first shadow at foot left. While learning just now, next to there is a right lunge and a right shadow. When doing this action, the body rotates the knot. Let's take a look first. As you have just seen, the direction I just do the motion is 45 degree to the nerve diagonal. I'm going to turn 45 degrees behind me. If we turn from this angle, we only need to turn 90 degrees, and we rotate it to the right, turning our body. Two hundred and seventeen degrees. This is a big turning, but the turning ways of changing the person into a single whip, the buckling, the suit, and the lifting the nerves are the same. The important thing is that the left suit should be fully buckled as close as possible to 135 degrees, even if it cannot be buckled enough. In 37 style, we cannot buckle the left suit inward by shifting the gravity. There are higher requirements for the opening and closing ability of the waist and the crouch. However, when preparing to buckle your feet, you must place the weight of your front foot on the back heel, with the crouch root facing the heel. Wrap left crouch inward and both crouch roots inward too. The waist and tailbones should be pulled inward and forward. So that this foot can be buckled in. At this point, you are already sitting firmly on your left nerve. As long as you release your nerve and lift your knee, your body can naturally open. Once you lift your nerve and release it, you can move to the direction you want to go. It just matter of the angle. About opening the vertebral nerve in the ear, the waist and crouch are like a rubber band. When you loosen it, once you twist it, its rebound force is more. When you twist it a few more turns, its rebound force will become greater, which is its principle. Or though the rotation is relatively large, wrap the crotch and buckle the foot as much as possible, and wrap them inward by retracting the crotch and rolling the wrist together. They will naturally move to the direction you want to go. As soon as it's opened, so remember this skill. We have already learned about feet, and now we need to pay attention to the chains in hand shape after left shadow. Relax the left hand and drop the elbow. Rotate the thumb outward, the left palm facing inward, the right palm facing outward, the palm facing diagonally upward to meet left elbow. Like dragging the left elbow, and the left hand keep on falling. Stretch your right hand out while lifting and extending nerve. Then lunge forward and push like this. Take a look in this direction. Back your foot, relax your shoulders, drop your elbows. Wrap your hands inward and then move your gravity back. Lift your nerve 
and relax your crouch with your hand and foot coming out together while your foot touches the ground. Push your hand to the front, level with your chest. And your left hand falling in front of your crouch. Then take forward lunge while your right hand is suspended, pulling back and pushing your left hand forward. Do like this. Take look in this direction again. Back your foot, wrapping, sitting back, lifting your neck. Relaxing, holding right hand upper, push left hand outward. Be sure that hand and foot must go out at the same time. Push forward and up, and then rock it up and backward. When goes out, the angle of the foot buckle is not enough, and the foot turns to move backward. Turning around and rotating both feet at the same time, holding the right hand and pushing the left hand outward. This is the kind of confusing between the solid empty foot. This action is a little difficult for beginners. At beginning, it's not easy to do it well in a short time. So we need to practice more. In particular, the coordination between crouch retraction and wrist rolling is a difficult point in Tai Chi Chuan. Next, I'll show you a complete demonstration of the two movements in three directions. Please follow me. Hand and foot out. Rotate right hand upward. Push left arm forward with rotation. As for part while horseman and the fur lady shadows nerved. Try to buckle the foot in as much as possible. Don't shift your weight. Sit still. Relax your hip, and as soon as you relax it, it will go out. Rotate your right hand up and push your left arm forward with rotation. Having the back view again. Shadow nerved. Foot down, hand and foot down together. Correct direction. Take your foot back and don't touch them yet. And the crotch must be opened and seated. You can kick back nerve or rolling back foot. Adjust the angle of the back foot. They see the teaching of the fur lady shadow. Now next, her. Let's move to the next step. Threading palm from normal direction. After right shadow, move the gravity forward. Turn the body north. It turn the right hand forward to cup down. Up the left hand to the left chest, and then step forward with the left foot. Drop your heel to the ground while putting your left hand forward. Turning your right palm upward on your left elbow, then keep on lunging. Continue to extend your left hand forward. Turn the right 
palm to face downward and back to the left armpit. Let's look another side. And the hand can be seen more clearly in this direction. Please note that in the first movement, the gravity moves forward and the body turns nerve to make the body turn right. Right hand covers down and lift the nerve hand with the palm faces upward. On your nerve turns, the right hand is slightly lower. First move, step up, turn your right hand down. Look at your left elbow as if you were dragging it. Then continue to lunge forward. Press your right hand again. Turn your palm down. Your palm sits and thread your left hand forward. In this section, we should pay attention to two points. The first point is covering. With the right hand turns downward, press it down with the palm, and cover the palm downward to serve as holding up function. Cover the left hand. The left hand needs to go out. So make sure that the right hand is lower and left hand is higher. The first is to cover and defend. The second, pull the left hand back to the left chest and thread the palm forward from the chest. Pay attention to the smoothness of the hand back and forearm. When the hand goes out, take diagonal line externally diagonally forward. It seems that. We took spear and gun and thrust forward. Note that when the left hand goes out, it should not become a standing circle, extending from top to bottom. This becomes absurd in the wise nerve shows tongue, 白蛇吐信 and downward hand clapping. Threading the palm is a straight line action. Zero is a relative symbol. Just one covering, one threading. They see the threading palm action. Come down and demonstrate it again from the back. Threading palm is a forward lunge act. So both hands are flat and the body is facing straight to her. Don't turn sideways. In addition, once the right hand is covered, the palm is facing downward. Then, when the left hand thread on the left elbow. The palm should be turned upward while moving forward. Turn the palm downward again. Drop your palm onto your left armpit. This is practice of threading palm. Next, we'll explain the cross nerve, also known as the single swing nerves. After threading the palm in the eight-five style, wrap the crouch, buckle the foot, lift the knee, and break up the kick. This is the right heel kick with turning. In the early routine of Yang's Tai Chi Chuan, this movement was a single swing noodles, which was a two swing. Using one hand to tap the face of right foot, there is also a double swings notice behind it. Using both hands to pat the foot and then squat down, 
The difference between these two motions is paddling with one hand or two hands. As taking a step back and crossing the tiger with the left hand picking, the no nerk hooking, and as turning round, this nerk is a back sweeping nerk. Therefore, it consists of three nerk techniques: one hook nerk. One sweeping nerd and one swing nerd. Single swing nerds have only one swing nerd. Now let's keep on watching, starting with the threading palm. First, look at the hand. Shift gravity to the right. Buckle the foot and turn the hand. Move the gravity onto the right nerve, and then sit back. Up your right nerve again. Turn your right foot to the right. Kick it diagonally to the nerve, and then swing it back flatly. Swing the nerve backward. Swing the left hand to the nerve with the wrist turning. Causing the foot to meet in the hand in the air, and this action is done here. Here, sit back, up your knee, swing your feet, sink with the flow, and settle down here. This is the swing motion. Let's take a look in this direction again. Reverse the gravity. Sit back. Up the nerd. Clap. Sink and so on. From back view again. Bending the elbow. Pulling it back. Flattening. Sitting still. Lifting the knee. Clapping it and sinking it down. This is single swing nerds, also known as the cross nerd. The three movements: the four lady shadows, threading the palm, and swing the nerds are explained here. For the complete concert, I will demonstrate it once again. Starting with the part in the wild horse's mane, the fur lady shadows, backer suit, and bend the elbow back. Again, Here are the three actions we learned in this lesson. Now, thank you all. Thank you so much. Okay, everyone. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much for the listening. Our thirty thirty-seven Tai Chi Chan from Master Zhao Youbin and Zhao Liang, uh, our free lecture today. And if you want to um, see see uh review this video, you can also enjoy our uh, YouTube chat, uh YouTube connection uh communication, and also our homepage for one uh Thai uh European Thai Jin. So okay, have a nice evening. Bye bye.